opening night. Two words that the Natick Redhawks have been looking forward to saying for 280 days. With the lineup set and the team prepared for action after a heavy preseason schedule, it was once again time for the site of high school hockey to be back at Chase Arena. Year after year, as a new season continuously rolls around, it may just appear as another game in a long season to the average viewer. However, take a glance across the chase ice on opening night and it emphatically indicates otherwise. For the Red Hawks and the hundreds surrounding them, this is the day that rouses the hockey senses and spirit in an altogether different way. After a deep playoff run a year ago, the Red Hawks finally get to step foot on home ice to hear the crowd cheer with renewed vigor and energy, while having the best home ice advantage the Bay State has to offer. Oh, they're ready, they're ready. They're all amped up, we're all amped up, we're ready to go. Uh, we've been working hard, we're ready. We're definitely ready. Eager to get started, the group of 26 players take the ice with expectations set higher than ever before. Their first opponent is one in which the program has not faced in quite some time in the form of the Chelmsford Lions. Uh, Scott report on Chelmsford is, uh, you know, they're a D1 North team, they're a perennial playoff contender. They were uh, a powerhouse last year, they lost 17 guys. So it's a new team and a new coach, but uh, sometimes great motivation on a, and a new program, so we'll see. This year, however, the Lions are a much different team after being hit hard by graduation following a quarterfinal loss in the playoffs. They lost a total of 17 seniors, along with their coach, after resigning this summer. Well, hopefully we get off to the right start tonight. And we play our positions, we work hard, back check, all three zones. Everything we worked on in practice hopefully comes together tonight and we'll be off to a good note. A win's a win. If we don't win but the effort's there, that's fine. We always have something to build on regardless. Uh, key contributors tonight have to be uh, Sean Harney. I think it's the beginning of a uh, huge year for him. And uh, I think I uh, you know, expect big and better things from him every year. Dylan Arno as well. Uh, also James Herring, who's making his first ever start net. And uh, a surprise guy that might put a puck in the net tonight is uh, Ricky Mingalelli. Despite the change, the Red Hawks knew they could not take this team lightly. With a new coach and a young team motivated for early season success, it was going to take the best the Red Hawks had to offer in order to come out victorious. And everyone surrounding the team were well aware as they prepared to take the ice. Preseason, we worked hard, we're ready to go. Let's show everybody we're ready to go. Every team come in here, got our number, looking for us because of our season last year. We're not sneaking up on anybody. You gotta come ready to play every shift. Yes, Guys, the start of a new journey, all right? So get out there, play your ass off, all right? Every single shift, lay it all on the line. Kick some ass out there tonight, guys. Yeah.
is a moment that this team and this program have been waiting for for almost an entire year now. They've lost some key pieces. They've gained some key pieces. And here's the beginning of the 2016-2017 Natick Red Hawks varsity hockey season. Hello and welcome to William L. Chase Arena. My name is Tim Foley. Alongside me is Cam Pierce. And here we are. It's hockey season once again in Natick. In what ultimately proved to be a back and forth contest, the Red Hawks and the Lions battled for the full 45 minutes of game Beanie. action. Able to find some ice on the opposite side. His Both goalies were up to the task, facing 22 shots apiece. But it was sophomore James Herring for Natick, making his first career varsity start, who stood tall the entire game. Forward behind the net. Save Herring, another one. He doesn't know where it is. Shot there in front point. Still loose, still loose. Tim's up known as a grinder on this team, but it'd be good to see some offensive production. From it's here. Nice save, Harry. Wide to Mulholland. Pass up to Sean Harney. Sean Harney's got Peeney on the right side. His shot missed wide Passes left. out front. Here comes Shea. Oh, that shot manages to get through traffic. Missed wide right. And there we are at the end of the first period. Good first period, all right? We have good chances. We have some good chances. A little strong in the D zone though, right? James bailed us out a couple times there. We've had some good zone time when we get the puck in there. Third guy high all the time, right? <coughs> There's one shift, Robbie, your whole line was over in this corner. Yeah. All right, one guy here, one guy low. High, keep that high guy. We're able to pinch them in when we keep the one guy up high. Listen. Coach Knapp and I were talking on the way out, right? I don't think those guys are getting any better. We can get better, yeah. all right? We can play better, all right? Just keep the momentum, try to get the momentum to start this period. Woo! Let's go, Similar uh, power play formation. Sean Harney with speed moving around. Just right. Oh, chance in front. No. Chelmsford knocking on the doorstep there. Almost getting away. Now another opportunity. Bounces up. Pass up to the point. Nice a diving block. Nailing one of the Chelmsford players into the board says, making some moves. Robbie Peeney put on the silk gloves but couldn't quite finish it. In a game of who was going to blink first, the Red Hawks struck with a goal in the second from by Dylan that, that would have been something. Miga's shot, gloved down but not handled by Chelmsford. Chance and they score! Dylan Arno! Five hole! David's on the board! That's what zone time possession does for you. It pays off for Natick. So many chances in that last minute there for Natick. Something had to go. And Phil Arno was able to find the gaping hole between the goalie's legs. Uh, now here's Phil Arno picking Al Arno. I apologize. Over to Dill. And a nice, spectacular save. Sullivan able to clear it out. That'll be icy. If there was more time. Not before the buzzer, of course. <laughs> so that'll do it for the second period here at William L. Chase Arena. We've seen one goal so far in favor of the Red Hawks. Put in the back of the net by Dill Arno. Get one. Let's get 
That's some hockey, boys. It's not working. Yeah, it's not working. Yeah, it's just like Shaq's game. All right, guys, I'm showing that period. Better. Not terrific, but better. All right? Guys, when six is on the ice, defense is not pinching. Okay? Do not let him. He's the only one on that team that's going to beat us. Guys, no coasting out there. Right? Every single shift balls to the wall. Every single time. All right? Even if it's 30 seconds, you got to get off. All right? They've been running two lines with a third sparingly. Our legs are fresh. We're ready to go. Guys, when they're coming into our zone, too, the last guy coming back got to pick up their far winger. He's the most dangerous guy on the ice. I'm up and after two. We'll see you in 15, Kurt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third and final period of action here at William L. Chase Arena. Dill Arno stopping below the net, looking for someone to give it to. Here's Sullivan at the point. His oh! shot off the postage. Joey Soma now with the puck, waiting, waiting. Pucks in front between the goalie and the net. The Redhawks then struck again with a goal in the third by Ryan Haswell to secure their first victory of the season Soma. and win number one for netminder James Herring. Leaves it for Mingalelli. In front oh! and it's That's brilliant! Ryan That's Haswell! Oh my Absolutely goodness! Absolutely brilliant! Absolutely brilliant! You said it so perfectly, John! It all started with that little drop from Soma. He left it for Mingalelli. He worked his way around below the net, gave it out in front for Haswell, and the rest is history. Winning the first game of the season is truly a morale booster, showing that the preseason schedule and time put forth in practice can pay immediate dividends. At the conclusion of the game, the team was in high spirits, earning their first two points of the season on their road to the ultimate goal of 20 or more. Up top, they give it to Miga, his shot. Jumps are coming in, goalie's well out of his oh! crease. Slapped down by Reynolds, off the stick of Peeney. It's gonna be no icing and that's gonna be a win. Natick in their first game of the 2016-17 season have taken the first step towards the playoffs with this win of two to nothing over the Chelmsford Lions. And the locker room is quite the place to be following a hard earned victory. That's what we like to see. One and zero, baby, nothing better. Guys, good first win, boys, all right? Good to get the first one out of the way and under our belt. We've still got some work to do. We gotta get ready. Needham is gonna be one top opponent this year, okay? They can score goals this year, unlike in the past. Savor this win, I'm ready to go back to work tomorrow. Right? <laughs> say Good bonus. job, guys. That's on to Needham. You got like a you got Bono tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I just got upset. Right. You you said said win. Two points to start the season. That's why I'm up wins. Yeah. wins, one and oh. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Shot that dog. <laughs> That's big. On the needle. Yeah. Keep it going. Yeah. 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 That's a good jump for a team. That's going to be one of the, uh, one of the best teams we'll play first for first kind of games I mean, we'll play this season. That's good two points. Other teams are going to look at that jump for a team. And they're going to be scared of Natick. We got one game, two points, all right? Got it done the first game, first assist, first goal, first two points. What more can you ask, huh? That was a sick game, you know, just like crazy saves. I didn't even know I made those legendary. Um, unreal, unreal to start the season with a win last year. I think we we're 0-1-1 to start the season, first two games, so. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, it's it's huge to get those first two points out of the way. The first first goal and first one of the hardest. So. Stud. Uh, the excitement. Oh, oh, Lodi. Lodi, you're f***ing up the whole operation. Ah, <laughs> uh, birds are officially in flight. We got a tough Needham team on Saturday if Absent be there. Uh, but I think uh, we'll do some hard work in practice and we'll be ready. They're supposed to be a tough team. They're supposed to be a uh, high scoring team. But with James and that, I think we'll be okay. Unbelievable win by the boys. Unbelievable. Birds are flying. Birds are flying. That's it. That's a good win. Let's go. Saturday, 740.
While everyone can see what the players do on the ice to prepare for the season, they often do not realize what they may have to do off the ice to prepare themselves for the grind of a 20 game season. Well, the hockey team has just had their second uh, full workout of the new season and um, thus far they're doing well, very well. I think that they have a wide range of ability on the team, which uh, is par, that's pretty typical for a lot of teams. Although it may not be their most favorite thing about the season, the team works out on Thursday afternoons over the course of the year with the high school strength and conditioning coach, Mike Cohen. His program, in which is run for all the teams at the school, is designed specifically to help each of the different sports teams or individual student athletes get stronger in their sports specific field of play. I think the student athletes come in here so that they can uh, have a chance to work out as a team, hopefully getting stronger for their sports specific um, activity. Uh, while they're in here, I do hope that they also grow a little bit as a team. So a lot of what we'll do is designed around not only them getting physically stronger, but then developing a, uh, a stronger bond as a team. So I try to increase the team dynamic a little bit while they're here as well. Uh, the thing I like a lot about hockey right now actually is that um, <clears throat> even more so than other teams, they have what seems to be some pretty sound leadership. So it uh, seems like the captains take a pretty good leadership role. Um, not every team has a captain or a set of captains that are vocal. Uh, hockey seems like they have some captains that are vocal. Uh, and even more so, uh, hockey has captains who lead quite well by example. So um, it sometimes pans out that way. But for hockey specifically, their captains are the ones that are performing the best while in here. Um, they seem to be pretty good role models as far as how to work out hard, um, how to be physical in here, and how to put forth a pretty good effort. Okay, we just put some work in. Flybirds fly, boy. Flybirds fly. Oh, all that pain is going to help out. You'll see. Come watch us on Saturday. Hey, Come watch us on Saturday. Hey, catch the green line out. It's Saturday. Pack back. <laughs> that, was, that was good work. That was good work. Hey, you had a couple shining moments. <laughs> I can't tell you how happy I am. That's over. I hate Thursdays. All right, I'll tell you what. This is what happens when you miss the net. <laughs> I'm going to hit the cross. You just practice yesterday on the ball. Right? I was a little more lenient yesterday because we had a good first win. I want to see everybody working hard today. Okay? Party goes. All right? Push the bang attack in. We're going to go D to D. Break out. Pass it to the coach. Coach is going to dump it back in. We're going to go reverse. Now, like in a good program, an immediate need to refocus is necessary to help themselves prepare for the next opponent. As they step back onto the practice ice, it is essential that they get themselves ready for their next opponent. On Saturday, the Redhawks will travel to Babson Arena for the first Bay State Conference game of the season against the Needham Rockets. Oh, my God. 
Guys, good practice today, all right? Much better today than yesterday. I think we're ready. We gotta put some pucks in the net though tomorrow, oh, okay? Come on, guys. Oh, Birds. Birds. Holy Birds. Birds. Team on three, one, two, three, three. Let's go get them tomorrow, guys. What's up, Kurt? What's up, all right, we got a game tomorrow, I need them. Uh, huge tilt, should uh, get the dub. The goal of the Red Hawks team this year is, among other things, to capture the Bay State Conference regular season title. To do that, a win in their first league game would help set the tone early with every other team in its conference in action as well. Pre-game, it was stressed to the group how important this game was for something being played so early in the season. Do the things that we do well. Right? Dump the puck in, gain a red line, defenseman. Unless you have a clear break, gain the red, dump it in, and the forwards go get it. Lining up in the D zone, not letting the guy go through. Picking up the guy. Everybody knows what they have to do. And you guys got to realize you're playing a team that wings didn't come easy for these guys the last couple of years. They have two wings now. They got that taste of what it feels like to win. So now we got to work them. Effort and work. Kill their will early, take them right out of the game. You're ready to battle. Win those individual battles. Talk to your teammates. Let's us take the play to them, don't let them take the play to us. It was another great start for the Red Hawks, as they put in the first goal of the game when Ricky Mangalelli scored towards the end of the first period. Big goal, big goal, Rick. Huge goal, Rick. Guys, right, good period. Way to all work now, right? Keep the pressure up. You guys are the superior team here tonight. Early in the second, the Red Hawks struck again. This time, with Dylan Arno finding the back of the net for his second goal of the season. But like any game played over the course of a season, the opponents never do go quietly. The Rockets did just that, as they stormed back and took over the rest of the second period, scoring twice in the final four minutes to tie the game 2-2. Two to two. In between periods, the team attempted to refocus for a third period battle.
After the final 15 minutes of play, both teams had chances to walk away with victory. But the game finished tied, earning both teams a point for their efforts. Knowing they still earned a point despite the frustrating finish, the Red Hawks set their eyes on the first Hurricane Division opponent of the season for a Wednesday night contest against the Milton Wildcats. Um, well, you know, obviously we, we want to defend our Hurricane title. And, you know, Milton's a Hurricane opponent, so, you know, every game that, um, you know, it's within our division, it's always a big game, big tilt for us. Uh, well, we gave away a, a um, a win we should have had in Needham. We we're up two nothing, and then 9.6 .6 seconds left. Uh, they tied it up in the second period, and we couldn't get anything going in the third. So to be able to have five out of six possible points is uh, pretty big. The tie against Needham was kind of a setback, so we just wanted to get back on track uh, with a win against Milton. In the first period, Natick led one to zero with a goal by John Carr, but knew their performance could get better. I mean, we didn't play very well, but that's a good thing in a sense because if we're not playing our best and still getting a 4-2 win, we can't complain, so. We're not even close to playing our best hockey yet, so, you know, it's exciting to look forward. In the second, two more goals. One by Sean Harney and the other from Robbie Peeney. Lifted the Redhawks to a 3-0 advantage before Milton came right back with one of their own to cut it to 3-1. It was obviously a good, solid team win against Milton. Uh, Harney put two in the net, so it was good to get him, get the monkey off his back. And same with Peeney, he put one in. So hopefully they'll be rolling the next couple games. To close the period, Sean Harney scored another nifty goal to make it a 4-1 lead. In the third, the Red Hawks had hoped to continue their scoring efforts. However, Milton came out with more energy, controlling most of the sloppy on-ice play and scoring the only goal of the period. Regardless, the Red Hawks held on for their second win of the season and will certainly take five points in their first three games. In sports, Early results can often speak to what a team may look like for the rest of the season. But don't let that fool you when it comes to this Red Hawk hockey team. Although the results thus far are clearly mixed, and despite not displaying their best on-ice product to date, there is no questioning the fact that they will take their 2-0-1 record. And 5 out of a possible 6 points anytime you ask them. With a difficult tournament on tap and even bigger challenges ahead, the team is ready to take their game to another level. Where will they sit after these next group of games? How will the players respond to the necessary early season adjustments? However they end up answering those questions, there is one thing that is for certain in this long and unpredictable season. In order to succeed, they must do it together. Yeah, what are the questions? What are the questions like Milton? All right, well, I'm going to talk about how poor. Hi, mom.